Die folgende Episode wird auf Englisch präsentiert. The following episode is being presented in English. Hello, lovely people, and welcome to episode 129 of the Veggie World podcast. I'm Lars, and every Monday I'm talking about veganism, the environment, social justice, and how we can all save the world one day at a time. And today I'm speaking to Ian and Henry from Bosch TV. Thank you so much for tuning in this Monday. Welcome, welcome back. I hope you had a great week. I have to say I'm very excited because it's been a while since we've had our last English-speaking episode. Um, this being a mainly German-speaking podcast, of course. But when you get the chance to interview someone as iconic and as influential as Bosch, you don't think twice. The interview has been done for quite a while. We recorded in October last year on the Veggie World in Dusseldorf. And it took me about 20 or 30 minutes to get Ian and Henry unglued and unzipped from their signing tables where they were signing about 4,000 cookbooks, um, which is understandable. But um, thank you so much for your time, guys. Um, we were talking about like their early influences of cooking and uh, the name Bosch, of course, where that comes from. Um, how We talked a lot about food, of course, but also how they started, how they became the best-selling vegan cookbook authors of Europe. And uh, of course, because um, this is a podcast that's also very personal and near and dear to me, I talk about things that are important to me, which is like, how do we deal with social media and um, um, how is, is it like to be self-employed in these times to do like a media job? And also um, we talked about the dangers of burnout, because that is something I came quite close to last year. I think not as close as some of my guests. But um, yeah, it's always something I want to talk about to just inspire people to keep safe and uh, to keep a more healthy life work balance. So um, most important thing is that uh, Ian and Henry are just so damn likable and nice. And it's been a blast talking to them. I could have talked for hours, I have to say. These are the guys, you know, you want to have a cup of tea with or um, you want to have a couple of drinks with, you know, in the pub. And um philosophize about life just a bit so i wish you all a lot of fun with the interview with ian and henry from bosch tv well i'm finally sitting here with bosch with ian and henry thank you so much for taking the time it's amazing to have you here thank you for having us uh, all the way in germany how yeah. is it for you is this the first time for you in germany or have you been here it's before? the first time we're here as bosch yeah. we, we've come here before uh, raving in berlin Just as friends, <laughs> raving yeah. in Berlin, yeah. of course. So that was fun, but that yeah. was about uh, two years ago. Okay, I mean, what else would you do in German, like except <laughs> raving, right? <laughs> cool. Um, so I want to go back uh, all the way, actually, mm. and want to ask you, like, how did you? Where do you come from, actually, like mm -hmm. precisely? And how did you grow up? Like, what was your upbringing like? Did you was food always something important in your life? Mm. Well, we're both from um, a town or a city in the north of England called Sheffield. It's the same town that the Arctic Monkeys are from. I don't know if you know the Arctic Monkeys. Oh, I absolutely yeah. do. And I know um, Sheffield, actually. Yeah, so, yeah, so Sheffield's a great town. It's uh, in Yorkshire. Both Henry and I went to school together. We went to a secondary school called High Stores School. And, um, yeah, food, I think, is a big part of family life for most people. And it absolutely was for me. And I'm pretty sure it would have been for Henry. I remember... Um, Some of my most fond memories as a child is going to my grandparents' house in a small village called Gunthorpe and eating my grandmother's wonderful food, usually with vegetables that have been grown in the garden or in the, on the farm, because my grandfather was a farmer. So yeah, food has always been a big part of life. Cool. And we've always loved to cook as well. Like, for me being young, I remember my mum teaching me how to cook. She taught me how to make a veggie lasagna. That was oh, one of my really? first dishes, and she, oh, she was incredible. You know, she she would just bosh this thing together. Bosh. Pardon the pun. <laughs> ah. uh, that's how you use the word bosh, by the way. Ah, Some right. I was going to ask it, yeah. Yeah, so um, she would just bosh it together really quickly. No recipe. She wasn't the kind of person who liked to use a recipe, which always frustrated me, actually. Really? But then she taught me Mom, to Mom, how does it work? Yeah. <laughs> Do you just take flour, but yeah. how much? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then she yeah. taught me how to make curries, <laughs> mm. Jamie Oliver then took over with his cookbooks. I then learned to cook more curries from his cookbooks. 
and I guess I've always loved cooking and cookbooks. So what a delight that 10 years on, 15 years on, Ian and I got to write a cookbook and make videos about food every day. So was it always your plan to go into food? I mean, now food is your job, basically. But mm. um, what was your first intention as a job, like a career, uh, dream career? Uh, when I was young, I wanted to be an NBA basketballer. <laughs> so it was never never my plan to uh, go into food. Just food was something that I enjoyed cooking. Right. Uh, but I always enjoyed creating things. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was younger, I did a, um, I, I used to like drawing comics And I told my mum that I was going to be a sexism stopper and a Fun Day Times artist. And really? Fun Day Times was like a, a comic book that used to come in the Sunday Times newspaper. So I wanted to, that was like five years old or something. I wanted to draw cartoons and stop sexism. That was At what, five years I, yeah, old? Maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe. Wow. Yeah. I was young. How woke were you uh, yeah, as a five-year-old? <laughs> my mum my mom was definitely a feminist and a hippie. Cool. And then um, <laughs> fast forward to... 35 years or 36? Mm. No, 35. 35. Yeah. I can't remember how old I am. <laughs> Fast forward to now, and we create small little pieces of video, short mm. form content, which is a bit cartoony. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's all altruistic to do with changing the world for the better. Right. So I kind of feel like I ended up doing what I said I was going to do cool. 30 years ago, but it's just a different thing. Right. Mm. That's what I love about it. It's like how much you end up where you originally kind of planned, but in a completely different way. Yes. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Um, I actually, I, I, I wanted, always wanted to be an actor. So I nice. got into acting school and I was like, okay, I'm going to be a big screen actor. Yeah. yeah. And now I've given everything up for the microphone. And now I'm, you know, nice. it's, it's yeah. working. A voice but, actor. But a voice actor. And yeah. never, never, ever. Yeah. Would but thought, but would audio is becoming a very, very important medium. It's yeah. almost like it's gone full circle. Like radio was the thing right. that brought everybody around together, in, like in the 50s. And now podcasting is becoming by far and away one of the most valuable sources of media because it's the yeah. only thing that's really long form now that yeah. people will sit down and actually consume the full lot. Because video, as we've, we, as we know, like it can be really short form videos, but podcasting very, very important. Yeah. But also, it's passive, yeah. so you can do it while you're driving. Mm -hmm. You can do or, it on the or commute, cooking actually. Yeah. Yeah. I always do it while cooking, cooking yep. or in the gym. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So many times when you know we want to be entertained, mm -hmm. but we can't sit down in front of the TV. So yeah. That's why podcasting is so good. And I find out also like with. In adulthood, like the, um, it's a, just a great way to learn things. Mm. Like podcasting is um, a lot more people, I would say, would pro be interested in listening to a podcast than sitting down, and maybe reading a book, because it's like you say, it's a lot more passive, and you can do something else at the same time. And because we're so busy, and everyone wants to sort of yeah. fill their time uh, well, like driving a car and listening to a podcast, perfect way. Yeah, and I think it's it's the two re factors of it's been it's been a lot more democratic now mm. with the all the tech being cheaper and mm, better yeah. and now you can have like as a normal person you can actually do an a good sound quality and edit it on your laptop you know yeah you, absolutely that wasn't possible like 15 years ago no, really and um and yeah i think it's personal again mm -hmm. because i think video has been like i want to talk to you about this actually about social media and all that but um i think video has been some some sort of like depersonalized a bit because YouTube in the beginning was a lot more nerdy and personal and now yeah. is much more of a business. And I feel like Absolutely. podcast is more in kind of his infancy. Yeah, at least. Exactly. I mean, not really, but I mean, now it feels like now everybody's doing a podcast. Yeah, yeah, and true. it feels from when people tell me like, you're two years into podcasting, you're mm. old. I'm like, yeah. it's two years, guys. But, uh, <laughs> but the big post podcasters are like having a real fundamental impact on the way that the world yeah. works now, I feel. Like yeah. someone like a thought leader like Joe Rogan, mm -hmm. for instance, he um, did a podcast, a very good podcast with a guy called David Wallace Wells. Mm -hmm. And David Wallace Wells, I, I wouldn't have heard of him um, if it wasn't for that podcast. And I think that now, especially in the UK, when we go into bookshops, David Wallace Wells is absolutely every everywhere he's like oh, in really? in big chart positions and i think the reason for that popularity was the joe rogan podcast so it's having effects on the way that people think big time yeah yeah i, I mean i i feel it in my like super small circles i just you know when people come to me and say you know i never really heard listen to podcasts but i kind of was interested in veganism mm -hmm. then i 
got to listen to a bunch of podcasts, including yours, and that helped me, you know, become vegan, which is like the biggest news. Mm. Mate, well done. One could mm. That's really hear. good. You should be very proud. <laughs> you know, good skills, yeah, it's like yeah. the proudest moments. You yeah, know, exactly. it's like strangers you've never seen come yeah. come to you and they'll say, "Hey, mm. you helped me become vegan." It's like what? Yeah, wow. I, yeah, it's I think we feel the same. Like, yeah, when someone sends you, can be bothered enough to a cook your food and right. b take a photograph it and c send it to you. I think that's the proudest moment when you say that that recipe once lived inside our heads. Yeah, and now it's like living on somebody's table. And yeah, it's like people sustenance. have your children home. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing. For dinner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Ian, what was your what was your initial thought of a career? Oh, um, for me, uh, when I was growing up at school, I was very interested in fashion, very oh, in okay. in interested in menswear. And um, actually, when I left school, I went to be a nursery nurse for one to four-year-old children. Did that for a couple oh, of years, wow. which was good because the children were um, underprivileged, abused and deprived. And I learned a lot about sort of dealing with people and like these children had behavioral problems, but it was really, really enriching experience. But after doing that for a couple of years, I thought, I don't see myself doing this as a career. So I started working at a menswear store in Sheffield and, uh, and started working as a part-time sales assistant and then sales assistant and assistant manager and general manager and then did loads of buying as well. Wow. And um, I really enjoyed it, it was really, really good. But I kind of, towards the end of that uh, time in the fashion industry, I kind of had taken as much as I was gonna take from it. And I kind of was hungering to do something that was maybe slightly, that had a little bit more purpose. Because clothes are nice and everyone feels nice when they're wearing clothes. And they are important because no one walks around naked. But ultimately, it's still just kind of not that important. You right. know? And I, I, I kind of hungered for to do something more uh, with my career. And um, I think like when Bosch came around, it was, um, I think for both of us, it was like, a, like you know, a real fuel to the fire right. of, of um, things that we want to do and things that we truly believe in, you know. It's been a, a real awakening moment. Right. So how old were you when you had like the, the shift? When you thought, okay, I, I think I have, I have everything I can ever have from fashion. I want to do something else. I think uh, I left um, Sheffield stroke Nottingham uh, mm -hmm. because I lived in Nottingham for a while in 2012 and moved to mm -hmm. London. And I think the moving to London and sort of entrenching yourself in like a big cosmopolitan city right. with um, like lots of different people and yeah. lots of energy and lots of things to learn just by walking down a street. Right. I think moving to London was a key part in, in kind of... Um, yeah, building up what I wanted to do in the future. Did you uh, stay in contact the entire time? Like, have you been friends with, with each other like the entire time or, you, yeah, okay. So you didn't like lose contact and then went vegan and you're like, you're vegan now? No, I mean, so the way it happened was um, we were working in a startup together. Mm -hmm. Ian was my flatmate and friend. So we kind of lived together and worked together, which is kind of weird. But then also we'd cook things together as well. So we'd often eat as a house. <clears throat> right. Ian went vegan after a New Year challenge. Mm -hmm. He decided oh, really? he would go like January, February, March and cut things out. You're like one um, of two people in the world who actually stuck to their yeah, yeah, yeah. resolutions. Wow. And then he was going on about it. I thought it was silly. But then I watched the Cowspiracy film mm. with Ian. I then realized the environmental impact. I went vegan. So we were both two vegans discovering how to eat vegan food, living in a flat, at the same time as kind of finishing off this job we'd been doing. So it's like the perfect melting pot mm -hmm. for a change. And I think everyone, when they go vegan, says, I want to make a vegan blog. Right. Or, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Everyone's right. got yeah, a vegan yeah, yeah. blog. It's, and I remember someone making that joke to me five years ago, or four years ago when we went vegan. So, so we just did the same thing. Right. But I think because of... My background, I used to work in websites and videos and I knew how to make videos um, because of Ian's background in kind of trends and creativity and because we did a good job of getting the right people in place and getting the right things set up before we started making videos, we were able to launch videos at the right time that grew our social media channels and ultimately created a YouTube, Facebook and Instagram channel that's pretty much the biggest place to consume vegan recipes online now. Whereas many other people would start the same thing and wouldn't be as fortunate as we were. We managed to build something that was really big, really quickly. And that's how it all happened. Do you think it was largely due to your good planning or a good timing? timing um, I mean, four factor. years ago, of course, the, the landscape was a bit different, mm -hmm. but not too much, I think. I mean, now yeah. there's just more, but I feel 
I'm not too, super huge into cooking videos, but I feel like your style kind of redefined the cooking video yes. style. Mm. Yes, I yeah. think that's right. And, and I think it was, of course, there was timing uh, involved. I mean, I remember reading about Apple mm -hmm. and Steve Jobs and, you know, Microsoft and Bill Gates and all that stuff. And yeah, they've all done amazing things. And we can look at, you know, does Steve Jobs get up at five in the morning? Or what do these people do in the morning? And right. Yeah, we can learn some things by studying very successful people's habits. But at the same time, they were also born at the same time in the right part of the world right. where all of this innovation was happening. And I think the benefit that we had was we were people who knew how to work together. Right. We knew how to make videos. We liked cooking. Facebook videos were going wild at that time. Right. So there was a lot of reach on Facebook as far as videos are concerned. And that we, we spotted that as a trend and took advantage of that and were able to build this big recipe channel. But it wasn't a one-off because we've managed to do the same thing on Instagram and we're doing the same thing on YouTube now. So I think it's timing has been a big factor, but also hard work, dedication. And like we just get up every day and mm -hmm. go to work, seven days a week pretty yeah. much. Yeah. So the dedication was a really big factor as well. Mm. Yeah. And it's also... Um, when you find something that you're truly passionate about and there's there's it's not like oh we're driven by money or it's not as if we're driven by like the pursuit of fame what we're driven by is the the, the growth of the vegan movement and to be able to make vegan food as as normal as is possible Every, when you have that and you're just working with that purpose it's it becomes really really easy to work really really hard because nothing feels like work because you want to do it because you know that ultimately we're, we're, we're trying to like leave a legacy that's going to benefit a lot of people and the world going forward. I'd say we're also driven by... Another way of thinking about it is that we're driven by time. Yeah. And earning ourselves the time to keep doing what we're doing for longer. Yeah. So neither of us are in this for like uh, to make a quick buck no. or to, you know, uh, get a Ferrari We'll never get a Ferrari. Right. That's not the plan. <laughs> yeah. uh, even if we, uh, maybe a Tesla would be cool. Yeah, it's but, like an electric car. <laughs> but I think I think our business priority is very it's quite different than most businesses' priorities. Our business priority is just to buy ourselves more time so we yeah. can carry on doing what we're doing for longer. We're not really in it for anything other than that. And ultimately, we just want to move everybody closer to a vegan world. Right. Want so, do you still, vegan. after all this time, and you say seven days a week work? Um, do you still enjoy it? Yes. Like, yeah. Honestly? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like both of us have experienced regular jobs and the mundanity that comes with that sometimes. Mm -hmm. We're absolutely blessed to be doing what we're doing. I mean, we're sat here in a room with you chatting on a podcast in yeah. Germany. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, we've just cooked it's in fun. front of 300 people and, um, and had to sign a bunch of books. It's like what, what the life that we're living right now, we're both very aware, is quite exceptional and, and we're absolutely blessed to be doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you can from time to time get bogged down with yeah. things. And, and when maybe something happens, like you get a, a storm of comments online with people right. moaning about something you put in a video, or like that happened recently, actually, yeah. when we made a beautiful book called How to Live Vegan. And it's all about trying to help people go vegan or do it their way. And then we made a video promoting it where we put all of these things in a pot. So we put in a leather jacket and we put in some like wines and some ingredients and toothpaste and all these things. Some of them are, some of them aren't vegan. Put them all in this big pot and out of it comes the book, How to Live Vegan. And it's kind of like, not everything going in this pot is vegan, but some of them are. Do you know the difference? It's in this book. And then we had so many people getting right. angry yeah. about... How dare you jacket. use a leather jacket in a mm, video? Exactly. Yeah. So, so, the vegan police yeah. at yeah. work. Yeah, I and, and things like that will hit us. Yeah, yeah. Things yeah. like that will really hurt us. On that, at that time, honestly, we were driving all over, all over the UK in an electric car, um, which took stopping more frequently. We drove yeah. about 1,000 miles in an electric car to go and promote this book called How to Live Vegan. Mm. We couldn't hang out with our team. We couldn't hang out with our girlfriends or my fiance. We couldn't even really do work or emails because we were driving. Didn't been doing that for three weeks. So then to have loads of people angry in the comments, it's, mm. it does hit you mentally yeah, yeah, yeah. a bit. Then it feels like work. Yeah. But I think generally our day to day life, we get to make videos, we get to explore how to do a better job of making our videos. We get to come and cook in front of hundreds of people right. like we've done yeah. today. Yeah. It's just fun. Yeah. Yeah. It is definitely. And writing the recipes and all, everything else that comes with it is wonderful. And also, um, 
with regard to the point of the people who are annoyed at us and like vocally annoyed at us on social media, that's really one of the first times that's happened to us. Mm. Um, but ultimately, we don't get that much hate online because what we do is just give people recipes for free. Like right, yeah. we, we just we literally like every <laughs> single you. day we just write a recipe and we film it and we put it out there for free. Yeah. So just give people the the tools they need in order to make really good quality decisions. Right. Um, but that that one and also now in retrospect, having um, thought about those people, fair enough. You know, like everyone's entitled to their opinion and they're, and they they're bothered enough to tell us because not not because. They're just concerned that maybe we'd done the wrong thing and they were maybe trying to help us out with that. So, mm. you know, fair play. Everyone's entitled to their opinion and yeah. ultimately we learned from it, which is great. We did. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's 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 a hard culture to be open. I mean, to put something out that that's so personal, yeah. especially food, I think is very personal. And then video, it's art, it's very personal. Yeah. Yeah. And then being criticized for it, is, of course, it's like yeah, opening no, your yeah. heart, you yeah, know, yeah, and they're yeah, just yeah, stabbing yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think, I mean... <laughs> Being in arts and, and coming from a regular job, you know, having like, I think it's very important to have at least like one shitty job in your life. Oh, yeah. Just so you know mm. how privileged you are when you mm. don't have to do that anymore. Yeah, like, exactly. I think, yeah, it's, we were very quick to, to like nag and to, to, you know, to be very unhappy about the little things where I think overall, I mean, we're helping the vegan movement go forward. And I think that's yeah. something we're privileged. For sure. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, it's cool to, to to hear that you're that you see that after all this time because the other like the downside of of this privilege that you have that you reach a lot of people mm. i mean you reached a lot of people yeah, really. i mean how many views have you had on your it's approaching two billion uh, two billion yeah. you know i mean that's yeah, I can't it's, it's even mind-boggling. count that far a, you know yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like two billion but <laughs> I like think if you tried to count that far you wouldn't, take you, you wouldn't have enough time in your lifetime no. to count two Possibly, billion yeah and yeah. anything yeah, Especially I mean, if you if you'd have to write that under your signatures in yeah. your books, that would take forever. <laughs> um, but I think the downside is that um, that you're on all the time. Mm. You're working in your head, I believe, all the time, right? I mean, yeah. do you ever switch off? Do you ever leave your phones sometimes at yeah. home? I think it's important to find a bit of downtime every now and again to recharge the batteries. But I mean, this year especially for us has been particularly busy. We've written three books. <laughs> we've, um, we've, we've been working on other things, um, you know, aside from the books. We've been making the videos. Mm -hmm. We did a stint of two videos every single day for 80 days whilst what? going to yeah. um, America, <laughs> coming to Europe. Like this year has been incredibly busy so downtime this year has been scarce but like we said before we realize that we're in a privileged position and we don't want to waste any time yeah that's true although I think um, like I was when I was in the US this September I really realized how amazingly overworked I was mm -hmm. and I think that happens to a lot of one content creators and to activists yeah uh, so how do, what do you feel about like burning out and the, the risk of burning out because I think it's a really real risk it, it absolutely is yeah, I mean, I do think that I will sometimes wake up at three or four in the morning and thinking thinking about work and strategizing about things and then, you know, wake up, stand up for a minute, go to the bathroom, can't get back to sleep because your mind is racing. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. probably a telltale sign of a need to switch off and maybe go away for a bit. But even if you, even if you aren't able to go away, just having a bit of discipline to turn your phone off maybe for a Sunday... Mm. every couple of weeks is a really good thing to do I don't find the time to do it enough but every now and again <laughs> I will do it and it does I do really really feel the benefit from it yeah I also think that reading at night for me personally okay. that's a bit of a moment to switch off I might only get 10 or 15 minutes but I put my phone outside of the room it's not in my bedroom and just read maybe do some stretching before bed I think even if you don't have the time to take days or weeks of holiday away from the day to day and away from phone calls and text messages and the like. If you can just take little moments and put little bits of routine into your life, that can be really, really helpful. Yeah, yeah, yeah good point. Because, of, yeah. And Sorry. when it comes to um, actually taking a, a block of time off, like going on holiday, we'll still be working. Because yeah. it's like you still have to eat three times a day. And, every, and like naturally, if we go to, say, if we went to, uh, say we're here in Germany, and like we've, as soon as we finish this podcast, we're clear. And that like could be considered to be downside. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to go to 
the best jerk, like restaurant in Dusseldorf to try and get some ideas to bring back to make more videos. So it and never stops really. It. Yeah, we'll exactly. film it and put it on YouTube. So, yeah. so it is. Quite, and even if you're not doing a vlog for YouTube, you'll be right. doing Instagram stories of what you yeah. ate. So it's, so, so it's fine. It's wow. good. Yeah, just take care of yourselves. Yeah, yeah man. Well, well, we appreciate yeah. that. It's kind of you. Because uh, uh, I see that a lot around me. I mean, I saw that now with myself, mm. and I'm friends with a, a, a psychotherapist actually who's just working in a burnout clinic. And I talked to him about my last year, and he was like, "You should be a patient." You know? oh, really? <laughs> I was like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's it's got too. Maybe far. we should go and see your friend. Maybe yeah. we should. Okay. But, but I think it's just like, it's wow. just it's just. I think it's a very it's it's a stealthy thing mm. that just creeps up on you, and I think it's and that's why I want to focus on it more now in the podcast as well because I think it happens to more people yeah. than we think, and yeah. more to more people than would realize or, you know, they we are so trained to just keep on working and yeah. to keep on like functioning yeah. that I think it's really important to talk about maybe sometimes switching off. Yeah, yeah. You know? Do you know about burnout? I think that I experienced it much more in the last company mm -hmm. so the previous one was a startup that I founded and Ian was the first person in the door the first mm -hmm. employee um, effectively and we worked on that together for three years mm -hmm. it was a typical startup experience like raised money into it right. had investors had a big team of people we were building some technology it was like a messaging app mm -hmm. in the early days of whatsapp and stuff right and oh my goodness, that was a slog. Right. That was hard work. That was yeah, I, yeah. I experienced burnout there, where you know I'd wake up in the middle of the night and be unable to get to sleep every night, right. and I'd be terrified about having to maybe fire someone the next day, mm -hmm. or what is the journalist going to write about this piece of tech that we're building? Which right. investor is going to get angry? And that was burnout. I mean, that was I felt I couldn't sleep. My waking life was a bit of a nightmare. And it just got to the point where I just needed to be away. Mm. Lost track of my health, um, put on loads of pounds, and I couldn't be present with any of my friends and family. So I've experienced that bit. Mm. I think they actually refer to that as like founder depression mm. now. So that, that's definitely a thing. What I think what we experience now is, first of all, we eat plant-based, mm -hmm. which I think is a really beneficial thing for your body. <laughs> like you just yeah. get a consistency of energy and consistency of wellness and definitely faster recovery times. Right. So the combination of a plant-based diet, going to the gym regularly, which we make the effort to do, yeah. and the fact that the mental stress of wondering whether our business is going to fail has mostly gone. Mm -hmm. It's not completely gone. No. You know, we still have to we still have to hustle, but but at least we know that Ian and I are going to be able to carry on doing Bosch um, and we're not going to have to do a, a part-time job or something. Right. And I think with all, all of those factors, we may feel tired and we may get annoyed with each other from time to time, but I don't think it's burnout. Mm -hmm. no. But maybe your friend will tell us differently. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's definitely harder to tell when you love your job. Mm. You know? That's true. Yes. Um, so when, when was the, the moment for you when you thought, okay, we're, we're making these videos, it's fun, it's like a good hobby. When did you think, maybe we should turn this into a business? Was that like from from the early start because you said you planned it very well yeah. or like was the idea to make it a business like from the start or how did that happen? Yes. I mean, it, from the off, we did want to turn it into a thing. Oh, okay. uh, ultimately, we wanted to turn it into a business into the point where um, when we first started, um, I was like on a payroll from the get go. Like the, to be fair, it was a very lonely wage. It was one that could just just about pay rent and just about pay food. Mm -hmm. But it was it was yeah. We and wanted it, it to pay. become a business. I mean, but I think like it got really really real um, when we first walked into the meetings that we were having with publishers about. Um, our first cookbook and I remember specifically the, the moment when we walked into our now publisher's office it's uh, it was right next to the Shard right overlooking the Thames it was like on the 15th floor of the News International building we walked into this room it's a huge boardroom and there's about 12 people all stood there <laughs> so super sat, sat cliche yeah. yeah and we were like <laughs> okay good, goodness me this is like this is big like this is real and we sat down at the end of the thing and um, and, the, and the lady who is now the sort of head of the publishing house that we're with, HQ, part of 
HarperCollins. She stood up and was like, I want to sign you um, because we think that you guys can change the world with veganism. And then she looked at the person next to her and they stood up and they said why they wanted to sign us. Really? It was like everybody walked, went round this room. And at that point, as that was going on, I was like thinking, Jesus, this is this is big now. Like this, <laughs> this is this is about to go like you know massive. And ultimately, um, so we. I'm having trouble with the connection. Cheers, <laughs> <laughs> Siri. Yeah. And um, ultimately, um, that those that meeting that we had with those people, uh, with Harper Collins, has led us to write a cookbook uh, that has now become the biggest selling vegan cookbook of all time here in Europe. Wow. And um, yeah, I think that that moment for me was the moment where it's like, this is going to be big. But even now we take learnings from that first business mm -hmm. and we almost do the opposite of everything. Really? So now we never raised investment for yeah. what we do now. We just work as, you'd almost call it a lifestyle business. Mm -hmm. We resist the urge to hire anyone. It's, it's very easy to think as a person trying to build a business, I want to hire so-and-so or mm. I'm too busy, I need to hire a this or yeah. that. And then you hire those people, you multiply inefficiency, you add stress to your own plate and probably you don't make a better business. You, you right. make it harder for yourself. Mm. So we've kept everything really, really small now. Right. So even though it is managing to sustain itself and sustain us, we're not going to be building something big and massive and all-encompassing. Yeah. There are four of us, including me and Ian. Yeah. Right. So no Bosch empire on the horizon. No. Just a, a well, very maybe contained scalable, empire. Scalable, yeah, a scalable, scalable empire. empire where we do everything in a way that doesn't require much work from us. Right. So we want to keep our focus on making recipes, making videos, and maybe making TV shows or, or whatever. But mm. but let other people find ways to scale that out. Right. Without us having to employ them. Right. If that mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, so how, like, how does, and of course you can be as secret as you want to be about it, but how does earning money in the online business work now? Or did you earn your first money actually from the book? Sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the beginning we bootstrapped the business. Mm -hmm. So we kept everything really cheap. Mm -hmm. We didn't really pay anyone anything apart from Ian had a little bit of money to eat. <laughs> and, uh, Ugh, Ian, yeah. why do you have to <laughs> eat? Dare, no. How dare you eat eating. the scraps from the kitchen? Yeah, but we would, um, we would, we did. We had some side hustles. Mm -hmm. So we made these amazing videos. They'd gone hyper viral. Our page was growing, and there were a few companies that wanted the benefit of our video making technique. Right. So we would just act as producers for them, or right. create video content creators for them. That sustained us for a bit. Then the book came in and the book brought with it an advance and that meant I could quit the day job I was doing mm -hmm. and join full time. So that cool. was a moment in time. Now where we're at today, you know, there's been lots of books. We keep writing books. They bring in revenue. We also will work with brands sometimes mm -hmm. to um, promote their products and only brands that we believe in. But good, well thought through collaborations are can be a good source of income mm -hmm. if yeah. you know how to do them. Right. And then moving forward, we're thinking more about what we do moving forward, but there should be some food in shops mm -hmm. soon, we hope. Cool. Before too long, you should be able to walk into a supermarket and find Bosch on the shelves. Cool. Yeah, which will be very cool. Yeah. That will bring in a little bit of revenue, but it will be small. Mm -hmm. And we, we're also looking at building an online plan, so a way that we can support people who want to go down this healthy vegan nutrition route. Uh, we're going to build a service that enables them to do that, and we'll guide them through the process. Cool. Mm. Yeah, I think it just debunks the the myth of you becoming a millionaire as soon as you had yeah. like a million <laughs> views with your first video on YouTube. Yeah. Nope. Everybody Not believes, true. oh, you're swimming in money now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No. <laughs> nope. I think YouTube can be really, really valuable for people right. when they grow big, big. Right. Yeah. Like at the point where you've got... I mean, over 2 billion views, are you kidding me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although th those views plans. aren't on YouTube. So ah, I, I think there is right. a difference in the value of the platform. And um, we find Facebook and Instagram amazing for growth, amazing for right. reach, amazing for building an audience, and amazing for selling books. We haven't found it to be great in terms of the revenue that's come or not as good as YouTube. Right. So it's kind of... And then YouTube doesn't do such a good job of selling books to people. That's right. So... But it does quite a good job of paying you advertising money. Mm. So I think a, a million subscribers on YouTube, you could probably support yourself and someone right. else. Yeah, but not as a millionaire. 
<laughs> but no. not, not be a millionaire. Possibly. Mm. Yeah. Um, did you plan to change your, like, did you change the style of your videos over time? Or especially with Instagram becoming bigger and Facebook becoming less of a big thing? I mm. Yeah. I mean, we started out, the videos, all the videos that we did initially were square. Right. They were all top down perspective mm -hmm. with no, um, like, but the only human's element would be the hands. Yeah. So like there was no me, there was no. The Henry. Bosch style, actually. That's yeah. It. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they were all one minute long because that's what, basically what we built the videos for. Over the course of time, um, so you invented Instagram videos, actually. Uh, no, we've <laughs> definitely pushed boundaries. Yeah, we wow. pushed. Yeah, yeah. There was there was a, there was a, a couple of other companies doing those mm -hmm. kind of videos as well. But ultimately, yeah, we we were a big player in that and the growth of that wow. particular type of video. And then uh, as the course of time drew on, we kind of um, introduced ourselves to the camera. So we started doing a little bit of here yeah, my stuff. forearm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, you go like that. Put your arms out and then we bring it up to your face. Here I am. That's it. So we were like <laughs> top and tailing the video. So we'd introduce right. the video. The recipe would be as it is, and then we'd sort of sign off at the end. And then we've done a lot more kind of vloggy type content where we go roaming around and like film ourselves eating food or like visiting different countries or different vegan restaurants in London or wherever. Um, and then recently we've been doing a lot more long form content on Instagram as well because mm -hmm. IGTV yeah. has allowed us to do that. I think, yeah, we've been quite, um, we've kind of reacted to the way that the landscape has changed and we've kind of adapted and grown with the services that are available to us. So um, yeah, we've kind of, we're, we're, we're always learning. We're never experts and uh, we kind of like do what is needed at the time. Wow. Yeah. But I think we're going to be, you'll be seeing a lot more of us doing presenting before long. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Um, like what was the, the most memorable piece of like feedback that you've ever gotten that stayed the most with you? Positive, negative, whatever. Like <sighs> um, most moving. Alex at the Uber. Yeah, but, but he wasn't so much. So, it, okay, so I remember. So it was just before we launched Bish Bash Bosch. It was like the unofficial private launch party that we did at this old venue in the old BBC building in, uh, wow. in London, which is really cool. So we went there and we'd, um, we had written a menu that, that would comprise from Bish Bash Bosch and the, um, the chefs at the place had, had cooked it up. And it was all really cool because we, we got to meet a bunch of people and sign a bunch of books. And then after, we were riding the crest of a wave. We had had a couple of drinks and we were all bouncing around like, yes, you know, book number two is coming out. That was super exciting. So we, uh, but we thought, no, we've still got work tomorrow, so we won't go out. We'll just go home and we'll jump in an Uber to go home. So we rang the Uber. The Uber came and we jumped into the Uber and we are still chatting away in the car like, oh, wasn't that amazing? This new book hopefully it's going to do really well everyone seemed to like the food and then the the uber driver piped up and he was like oh so what are you guys talking about and we said oh we're just talking about our new book the new cookbook we've just written it's called bish bash bosh and it's a vegan cookbook and he was like oh wow um well it's interesting that you say that because i'm vegan and we we're like really and it's like yeah yeah and um he was like in fact veganism has changed saved my life and we were like, well, what do you mean? Like, why? How come? And he said that um, he had crippling sinusitis, this guy. He, for three years, he had basically been um, like, that had this pain inside him, like because of the sinusitis. And he'd done everything in his power to try and stop it and to try and change his life for the better and try and just become normal again. Right. And he had tried like every drug going, he tried changing his, changing of his diet. And then one day someone had said, I've re read about um, how vegan food can reduce the effects of sinusitis. So he was like, okay, cool, I'm gonna try that. And um, yeah, he, he gave vegan a whirl and within three weeks, he'd gone from genuinely thinking about killing himself to living a, a long, happy life without sinusitis. Wow. So that, was, um, that wasn't that was Bosch specific, but it, in terms of the, the effect that a veganism can have on you in a positive way, that was one of the, the most heartwarming stories we've ever heard. Yeah. We also heard about um, a lady, I, I forget her name, she came to one of our book signings and she had lost six stone by cooking Bosch recipes. Can you, can you uh, like turn that into something like grams or kilograms or something? Six okay, stone? yeah. I don't know. Well, isn't that like 60 kilograms? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fair old whack of weight. It might be more. Yeah. yeah. She, she had lost like probably half of her body weight. Or how many pounds? So many I'm, pounds I'm 80 kilograms, that's about 11 and a half stone. So it'll be 40 no, kilograms. Yeah, yeah, 40 to 60 kilograms, yeah. 
About, yeah. Yeah. You, you're how much? I'm about 80 kilograms. And you're how many stone? Um, uh, it's about, stone. about 11 and a half, 12. So it's about seven or eight. Okay, so yeah, let's so say 40 four, kilograms. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So she had, lost wow. four, she had lost 40 kilograms by going vegan, cooking boss recipes, and that was it. Wow. Yeah. That was the process. And obviously she was she must have been very overweight before, like in a way that was damaging to her health. Right. And we don't judge people based on what they weigh. It's sure. not our style at all. Um, we, but like, if it helps them going healthier, exactly, that's amazing. Because mm-hmm. there is a point where it does become a problem. Mm-hmm. And 40 kilograms by cooking Bosch recipes was amazing. We were so yeah. happy to meet her. Yeah. And um, it's one of the inspirations for making this new book that we're doing, Healthy Bosch, Healthy Vegan which is all about how to get that balanced, healthy vegan life. Right. Because so many people do it wrong, you know? Yeah. You come I mean, to events like Veggie World. Yeah, you when you burgers. get like a nice vegan pizza or a lasagna, yeah. as you told me. Yeah. Now that yes. it's all available, yeah. when, when we started this, you'd go on your phone and look for vegan takeaway. Yeah. And find nothing. Yeah. No, there's nothing. nothing. Zero, yeah. zero responses. Even in London. Yeah, in London. Wow. That, was, that, that was me in London, I remember, four years ago, thinking, shall I start a vegan takeaway? Right. Because London has nothing. Now, it's everywhere. Mm. So it's actually almost harder as a vegan because you have to wade through all of the bad food. I think we had about three <laughs> years true. of it yeah. being easy to eat well because there's nothing available. <laughs> now Fantastic. that's gone. Yeah, no, no, now there's yeah. almost too much choice. Now you need self-discipline. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what is that? Yeah. Um, isn't it am- like, how is it for you as two guys from Sheffield mm. to have this impact? Because I'm like from the countryside. I've, mm. I, for me, it's always like super surreal. Yeah, I mean, I it's think... weird. We're not, it's not a countryside. I mean, it is the city. Yeah. It's just, as you know, you've been there, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. what did you go there for? Um, I think it was, it was for vacation, but it was like, actually like literally 20 years ago. So nice. it's been, it's been a while. It's a weird place to go on vacation. Yeah. Unless you're a rock climber, it's a big place for rock climbing. Right. Are you from Borkham? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm from actually. I'm from Westphalia. I'm from the near oh, Bielefeld. Right. Yeah, yeah, because um, Borkham. Uh, the reason why I ask is Borkham is uh, twinned with Sheffield. Oh. And I remember <laughs> you were hoping to say yes. Yeah, that would have been it amazing. It wasn't a school exchange yeah. or anything. Okay, no, no, no. That's it. Because I, I remember I did a school exchange in Borkham. Oh. I, I went to stay at a, a German house. It was it was it was lovely. The food was yeah. very good. They were very very <laughs> kind people. <laughs> but yeah. anyway, that's the side. No Sheffield. I mean, of course, but I mean. I don't know, maybe I'm biased because it was just to the US and everything's huge there. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, Sheffield isn't London, that's what I mean. Like, no, it's yeah. true. You're not like big city guys. Yeah. You know, that's what I mean. But we moved to London and I was born in London. So oh, okay. I feel like. You feel like a Londoner. I'm, I'm like half, half. Right. But what is interesting is when we go back to Sheffield mm. and we, we don't do that enough because we're too busy working. But you get to see everybody, hang out with everybody, and then you do get spotted in the street. Mm-hmm. In London, we yeah. don't really get spotted in the street very often, although it does sometimes happen. Yeah. In Sheffield, it happens quite regularly. Cool. And then if you go to a vegetarian restaurant or a vegetarian <laughs> festival like well, Veggie World, boom. then you can't move. Yeah. It's quite nice because well, what will happen is we'll be in here and we'll be milling around and we'll get to hang out with everybody and meet loads of people, do Instagram photos. and But then there comes a point when you need a bit of space. But the minute we leave here, we we'll, no one will know who we are. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. So it's yeah. quite a nice. That's, that's the cool obscurity. thing about veganism being still a niche, niche right? It's yeah, the yeah, one yeah. good thing about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but like, in terms of um, us being from Sheffield and having a big impact, it's just the age that we live in now. It's the social media age, mm-hmm. the age of the internet, and it's encouraging because it just shows that anyone can have a massive impact mm-hmm. if they if if what they're saying or what they're selling is right. Yeah. You know, um, if. I think like we got big because we truly believe in what we're doing and um, hopefully we'll, it will carry on for a long time. Yeah, and because you work your butts off. Yeah, that's true, <laughs> we do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's what I try to tell everybody. It's like everybody thinks you need to be special to mm. be uh, like quote unquote famous or, or impactful. Mm. But I think everybody can be in their own way. People yeah. just think that they need to be like Bosch to be, you know, to make yeah. an impact, but mm. they don't need to be, you know. No, it's even if it's nice. someone who just, you know, like cooks a vegan meal every so often, takes a photograph, sticks it on their story on yeah. Instagram, it all has, every tiny little thing has a big impact ultimately. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, we obviously we get loads and loads of views, but um, like they talk about sort of micro influencers and people who, mm. yeah, they might have like three or 4,000 followers, but the people that do follow them are hyper engaged and listen to what they're saying. So every piece of vegan content that goes out is having a big effect yeah. in, on the wider sort of mission. Mm. It's really important. And I think as a tip for anyone who is, you know, aiming to build a, a vlog or a blog or a vegan business or even just 
find their own form of micro activism. Mm -hmm. There's a quote, and I can't remember who said it, but it's along the lines of, we are what we do consistently. Mm. Mm. It was someone really famous that said that. I can't Let's say who it Einstein. Was. Was yeah, it was someone like that. <laughs> and and the, I think that consistency is really important. Yeah. So doing something, if you're doing it every week or every day or every three days, having that consistency is incredibly valuable. You could have a food trader here who at Veggie World, at the Veggie World Festival, who shows up every week or every year or every month or however regularly it is, they cook their food, they manage to make ends meet from a profitability perspective, and they keep going and they keep going and they keep going. They're consistently good with their food, they're consistently improving. They will ultimately grow and grow and grow, Yeah, hopefully. You look at someone like, um, was it Tofurky? Mm. The founders of Tofurky in America had been making Tofurky for years. Yeah. yeah. And then all of a sudden the vegan yeah. trend <laughs> blew up and they're now massively valuable. But they just kept showing mm. up. And with us, you know, somehow now people in Dusseldorf know that they can expect right. recipe videos from us on a regular basis, probably nearly daily. And so they come back because they expect that kind of video and they expect those kind of recipes from us. And that's purely consistency that's built that. Yeah. So I think consistency is key. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, the, the 10,000 hours you put into it, mm. right? The, yeah, I think that's the, the, the hard work in the age of instant gratification. Yeah. Think? Again, I mean, it's super easy to put a video on now. And you film mm. it on your phone. You can instantly put it up. Yeah. But then working consistently, I think, is a is a big thing. Um, mm. My wife and I actually had a, a vegan food truck for two years. Nice. And cool. like, it took people months. Like people saw, and we were in a very small city. Mm. And people like took four or five months sometimes to just circle us mm. and to s slowly come nearer and say, oh, "It's vegan. I don't know if I can eat it." Yeah. You know, it's like. <laughs> But it takes time. It just takes time yeah. to, and also to improve, yeah. Right? Yeah. to just become better at what you are. Yeah. Do you do you ever go back and watch like one of your first videos and be like, ah. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> Some of the videos that we put out are questionable, but it was all part of the process. Yeah, you know, you just yeah. have to you have to go through those moments uh, in order to learn. It's sometimes the best thing that you can do is fail, yeah. because if if you don't fail, then how are you going to learn and react? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. One of my favorite quotes ever is "Fail faster." Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because just it, it, we're so afraid of failing all the time that we we're held back of starting something. And I think mm. it, you should definitely start before you're ready. Just yeah. do it, yeah. and yeah. then just fail as fast as mm. you can. Yeah, and then do it again. Yeah, and that's the key thing. Because <laughs> yeah. if you fail and then you stop, yeah, that's when failure happens. Yeah, so like I gave up. you get a you get a shit ton of like bad comments on your latest cookbook. Just do the next cookbook. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, exactly. And and just brush yourself off. Um, but but if you obviously. Yeah, there's a quote in NLP where they say, there is no failure, only feedback. Mm -hmm. So it, failure only starts when you give up. But as long as you keep going and keep moving and keep learning, adapting, then yeah, you'll, you'll eventually find your way somewhere. Amazing. So like, what are your, I mean, you mentioned a couple of things, but what are your, like, your plans for the near future? What do you want to do next? To keep you interested as well, just <sighs> keep it fresh. I think being on camera more is mm. going to be important for us. Um, we'll still carry on making the videos with our hands and giving people the really simple, usual videos. Mm. But I think us getting in front of the screen a lot more, thinking a lot more about YouTube and mm. television and prioritizing that is going to define our next year. Cool. Yes, definitely. And um, obviously we've got a brand new book coming out 26th of December, which is the Healthy Vegan Cookbook, as we've spoken about before. Next year we've got another one in the pipeline, which will be coming out in August. We're still finalising the concept for that, but I think it's going to mm. be a good one. Help, again, people make the right decision when it comes to eating vegan food. We've got the line of products hopefully arriving in supermarkets, definitely in the United Kingdom in January, cool. and hopefully later on down the line in other cities and other countries. Um, 2020 is looking to be a big year, and, yeah. um, but not only for Bosch, just big in for, for the plant-based revolution at the same time. Oh, yeah. Because look what happened last V January when you've got like the Greg's oh. shop, sausage roll yes. came out. Yes, oh my God, I had it this summer. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah, it's good. yeah it's good. <laughs> two is better than one. Is uh, it? Two back to back yeah. is a good place to be. <laughs> I think that definitely big supermarkets and big um, corporate companies that sell food will be pushing and spearheading the movement even further mm. to the point where it will be difficult not to eat vegan food because it will be on every menu without question. Yeah. It's an exciting time. 
And from an internal perspective, since we've talked a lot about that, I, yeah. I think next year it would be really nice if our, our internal processes will allow us to be doing more cooking, mm-hmm. more camera work, more of the food and less of the business admin. Yeah, because much too much of our time at the moment is um, is like I don't know retesting and retesting recipes or proofreading mm. or finding VAT receipts. Right, too much of that stuff going on right now. <laughs> yeah. We need to be spending more time in the kitchen and yeah. on camera. Cook, cook, cooking. Achieve more with less work. Yeah. Actually, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that's that's very important just to improve your processes mm-hmm. all the time, right? Mm-hmm. Do you think about that a lot? Like, how can we improve this process? Or? Yes. Yeah, and and when we when we're doing so many pieces of content, just like with a podcast, but when mm. you're making so many videos, like maybe fourteen a week, mm. fourteen a week, we did, we did yeah, crazy. Yeah, two a day for oh eighty days. God, now we're doing seven a week still. Really? Um, mm. So so when you're doing that many, you need your processes to be solid, but you also need um, consistency, yeah. reliability, and the ability to just keep going. So we're going to be thinking a lot more about that to make our lives easier. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay, so, that's very impressive and scary at the same yeah. time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Two um, a day is a lot. Yeah, is it, it, it was. Yeah, it was. One it was, a day is also a lot. Yeah. I mean, wow. Um, so okay, uh, just to 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 wrap this up um, because I want to release you uh, <laughs> from this um, because I ask this everybody and I need to from two cooks. Uh, what's your favorite food right now? Like I can't say favorite food for all time because with vegans that never work, mm, works. It always changes, doesn't it? Yeah. Biff's Jack Shack is my favorite food. Right Biff's now. Jack Shack. Yes. Yeah, so what is that? Is, uh, a guy in London. He is called Biff, which is a name apparently. He's an yeah. American. Yeah. I mean, Back to the future. Back to the future. Right? Yeah, that's, that's what it. the dad's called, right? <laughs> right. And Biff is his cool dude, right? And he wears glasses. He looks like he's dressed like the guy in Back to the Future. Really. He wears. T-shirts with graffiti on them that are neon pink, very oh, okay. 80s. Okay, okay. What he does is he cooks incredible jackfruit wings. Oh. Crispy jackfruit wings. Oh, my God. So okay. he'll he'll pack the jackfruit tightly. He makes a bone out of sugar cane. Right. And breads them amazingly. Gorgeous flavor on the crumb. And then he's got lots of different barbecue sauces that he'll serve it with. That is my favorite food right now. Wow. Yeah, they're good. I'm, I'm big into tacos at the moment. Oh, really, aren't really, soft shell tacos? I'm loving the tacos. Like, but it's 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 not the flour tortillas. It has to be corn. Okay, so the hard hard shell. No, no, soft, not no, soft. Yeah, soft, like soft corn yeah. oh. t- tortilla um, ta- tortillas to make tacos. Right. And there's a place in London called the Club Mexicana, mm-hmm. and they do this wonderful um, fish taco, which is made out of tow fish, and it's absolutely delightful. They get the um, the salsas and the guacamole just mm-hmm. right. And also, a friend of ours, Joe, has just opened. Up a place in Sheffield called Pina, and uh, and his vegan tacos are absolutely phenomenal as well. Very oh, very good. Wow. But outside of street food, mm. you know, we cook things. Yeah. I just so, thought it's yeah. amazing that you don't yeah. tell me any of your food. Well, well, in terms of in terms of <laughs> our recipes, yeah. I would say the thing that I'm enjoying cooking the most at the moment is seitan. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're experimenting with seitan. We've got some really tasty steak recipes oh. and chicken nuggets, which we actually just filmed with Fun for Louis. Big YouTuber, mm-hmm. yeah. We made some chicken nuggets with him, and I think there's so much room to explore in Satan. Yeah, Satan has not been done right a lot. No, in the yeah, past. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to do. Yeah, actually. So I'm enjoying Satan. I yeah. actually just saw someone make Satan with a bread maker. No, that's mm. cool. So you can just there's a recipe for bread maker Satan. Might try that out. Yeah, bread yeah. maker Satan sounds cool. Um, and do you know what? Like at the hell, at the end of a hard day that you haven't been cooking, you've been in the office and you get back at like eight o'clock and you want to rustle something up real quick, right. stir fry. Stir yeah. fries for days. We've got uh, in our first cookbook, we have um, like a kind of how-to guide and of, of how to piece together a wonderful stir fry. So yeah, mm. I always love rustling up one of those. Yeah, the nice thing about doing a stir fry is if you do all of your preparation right, you get the pan stupidly hot, like crazy hot. You've got to use a wok for this kind of thing. Yeah. You can toss it rather than using a wooden spoon, which makes you feel more like a professional. Yeah. And you just feel cool. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, yeah. You know? um, we actually just did a cooking demo at Veggie World, which did you see any of our cooking demo? A bit. A little a bit. bit. Um, we, we made a curry in pretty much 10 minutes. Cool. But like a proper restaurant quality curry. 
Now, the reason we did that is because we did some preparation beforehand. We made an onion stock, a really rich, creamy, mm. flavoured, spiced onion stock, which you can batch cook, leave in your freezer, leave in your fridge. And then whenever you want to make a curry, 10-minute curries are ready. Cool. So we just cooked one of them. And it's again, that's another one where you feel like a proper chef. You get the pan really hot. You pour in your ingredients. Bosh, you've done it. Perfect. <laughs> oh, my God. I could talk to you about food now for yeah. two hours more. Yeah. Um, but where, where can I find your stuff? Whenever I want to look you up, look up your, one of your books uh, or all of them yeah. or your videos, where can I find you? Um, it, just check on social media. We're on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook at Bosch.tv. And uh, our books are readily available on Amazon and other online retailers. Fantastic. Guys, thank you so much for so much of your time, Thanks actually. Thank you so much. It's, it's been, been a pleasure. pleasure. being cool. My yeah. stomach is now definitely rumbling. Yeah, we need oh, to get yeah. an eat. Yeah. Yeah. release you right now. <laughs> so if you're itching to get into the kitchen and stand in front of your stove, have a like a top-down view on your stove and just start cooking Bosch style, which is quite understandable, head over to their website, their YouTube channel, and what have you. The link to everything Boschy is in the show notes, of course. And thank you again so much, Henry and Ian, for taking the time. It's been much appreciated. Also, it would be very wise of you to keep up to date with their stuff and their work because they're about to start a vegan TV series on Sunday mornings in the UK, which, of course, is a small step for them, maybe, but a huge step for humankind. Uh, Having a vegan TV series in, you know, like national television is a huge, huge thing. And I hope it inspires more television programmers to get more vegan people on shows. I think it's an amazing step. I really hope you liked this episode. If you have any questions, ideas, and thoughts on the podcast, as always, just shoot me an email to lars at veggieworld.de or write me directly on Instagram at LarsWalterOfficial. That's Lars.Walter, W-A-L-T-H-E-R dot official. And of course, feel free to follow us at Official Veggie World. If you like this episode, if you want to hear a bunch more in English or a ton more in German, if you like, go ahead and subscribe to the Veggie World podcast on the app of your choosing, be it Spotify or Google Podcasts or iTunes and the like. And write us an honest review on iTunes, which at the moment is sadly the only app that supports podcast reviews. Still in 2020, I can't believe it. Tell your friends, of course, and family uh, about us, especially if they're interested in veganism and starting out vegan or if they want to get just more informed on the entire topic of veganism, also on social equality, environmentalism, and making the world a better place. So we can reach, you know, an ever-growing audience and community of people with inspiring interviews like these and many, many more. We'll be back next Monday where I'm going to be talking to Ria Rehberg, about this year's big event, Veganuary, which is a very hard thing to say for somebody who is not a native speaker of English, Veganuary. It's going to be a blast, so tune in. It's going to be the third time that Ria is on the show, and every year she's got like something new up her sleeve, so it's going to be very interesting. Until then, rock your next week. Let's stand up together for the planet, for us, the people living on it, and of course, for the animals. Have fun saving the world. 